If you've ever been to the Christmas tree farm in Westernville, New York, you can see remnants of a piece of history that doesn't get much love these days. The Black River Canal. Often overshadowed by its big sister, the Erie Canal, in some ways, it's even more impressive. Boasting 109 locks and spanning 35 miles, it was a formidable challenge to complete. It started out in Rome and headed up to Boonville through the Lansing Kill Gorge, then made its way around Lyons Falls and linked up with the Black River and ultimately Lake Ontario. It effectively connected the Adirondacks to the rest of the world. And so many places prospered because of it. And what's more, in a sense, I even owe it my existence. So the least I can do is focus on it for this installment of the local New York history series. So let me take you back in time, back when canals provided a sort of floating highway for businesses and towns. There was a canal craze that erupted in 1825 after the Erie Canal opened, and none other than Governor DeWitt Clinton advocated for the idea of one going northward. Many central New Yorkers were also on board, but it wasn't until 1836 that the New York State Legislature, under Governor William Marcy, sanctioned the construction of such a canal. Chief engineer of the project, Porteous Root, opted for locks rather than hydraulic inclined planes that were used on other canals, and they got to work in 1837 on what would eventually be known as the Southern Section. There were some political disruptions to the work in the 1840s, but by 1849, water was flowing, and the first boat from Rome reached Boonville in May of 1850. But the work wasn't over. It would take six more years to complete the northern section up to Lyons Falls. And people seriously underestimated how hard it would be to make this thing. Originally, there was a very ambitious plan of going all the way up to Ogdensburg. But when they finally made it to Lyons Falls in 1855... The connection to the Black River was completed, and enough was enough. It was a monumental feat, consisting of 109 locks, more than the Erie Canal, mind you, and this even set a world record as a way to manage a 1,000-foot elevation change. The canal opened up the North Country and led to the rapid growth of lumber camps, sawmills, and timber as a major product shipped around the state and beyond. It would go off to places like the Brooklyn Navy Yard for ship masts and such, and all of this activity would lead to the establishment of various businesses along canal-side settlements. Take the Rome Waterworks in Ridge Mills, or hotels like the one in Westernville, or the Halfway House, halfway between Rome and Boonville. And speaking of Boonville, it played a central role in the canal's operations, and became a vital hub. But it wasn't the only settlement affected. Rome, Northwestern, Port Leiden, Carthage, and more would thrive. In fact, there was one small sawmill village with significant lumber-related activities, and because of that, they called it Forest Port. The nearby village of Delta was feeling left out, so in 1860, a feeder connected it to the canal from the Mohawk River. And this allowed for the establishment of Only and Floyd, a successful canning factory, whereby my great-grandparents could meet and I could exist. So thanks, Canal. This feeder was just one of the many construction operations that happened throughout the years. But overall, it didn't change much. Operations flowed like the canal itself. You had canal lock tenders living in homes near locks, and families like the Pixleys, who would control specific areas along the canal. It all went swimmingly. That is, when things weren't breaking or there weren't accidents happening. But in the end, the whole era was relatively short-lived. That's because canals were on their way out in this country, with the rise of the train, 
And that was just one of the many factors that would lead to the decline. Another one is how extensive logging prompted a forever wild statute in 1885, which would lead to the Adirondacks being preserved, and hence a drastic reduction of timber and its related business in the years to come. Even the transition to a barge canal system, which led to things like the Delta Dam project, couldn't stop the inevitable decline of the canal. It was abandoned in 1922, and the last boat departed from Boonville in July of 1924. Today, the Black River Canal Museum in Boonville is devoted to preserving this history. And if you want to learn more, you should check it out. Or just take a look out your window when driving through the area and see remnants of it. Have a good one. Thanks for joining today. If you're in Rome, New York, now you know why it's called the Black River Boulevard. And speaking of which, if you take one turn off of that, it's where we're gonna go next time, a former Air Force base. I'll see you there.